did you get into bodybuilding? Because I've you've always been kind of a thin, fit man. I've never yeah. remembered you being fat. I've loved lifting weights since high school. Okay. I had a very brief football career, but the coach at the time um, really believed that even though the weight room, the weight room wasn't just for the football players, it was for all the students. And because he knew I liked to lift weights, he encouraged me. And so I've been into that since I was a teenager. Um, in my late 30s, I was set I set a goal of things I wanted to do before I turned 40. And the brother that owned my gym, it was a black-owned gym I attended, he was like, you should do a show. So I put that on the list. And he remembered that I put it on the list because I kept putting it off. So at age 39, I did my first bodybuilding competition. And I was horrible. But I had what, what made you horrible? Because people think it's just about having big muscles and getting on the stage. The posing is difficult. It's really a, a form of isometric exercise. It's exhausting. You, you don't realize how, how you have to learn how to present your body in a way. It's not just a matter of getting on stage and flexing. It, it, was, it was a whole bunch of stuff whole that I hadn't thought about. choreography. Yeah, yeah. And then the way you train for competition is very different from just staying in shape. So I, I learned a lot. But I had such a great time because the fitness, um, the competitive fitness community, especially on the natural level, is a great group of people, crosses all racial boundaries, geogra- you know, p- politics. So it's a great it's where America should be. We should right. be able to all get along. Mm. And natural bodybuilding that community is like. So I loved it. I did it for four years. I stopped in 2002. Um, went 15 years without competing. And then 2017. Why? Because, you know, life, life. choices. Mm-hmm. You know, the, when I first started competing back in my late 30s, I was still, I was married at the time. I had three young children. Of course, I was editor-in-chief of Black Enterprise Magazine at the time. It was a very demanding job. So I, I did it for a few years. And then I kind of um, stopped in 2002 when I remarried, um, which wasn't a good choice, but that's another story for another time. Um, in fact, that's how you could tell you made a bad choice because you stopped doing the things you love to do. Mm. Relationship advice from Grown Zone. But at any rate, 15 years later, happily married, my wife Zara Green, everything's going great. My kids are groaning out of the house, and I kept, and I'm still in great shape because I never stopped working out, and I kept saying I was going to go back. So in 2017, uh, there was a show at Montclair State University, another federation of DFAC had a show there, and I said, it's right next door to where I live, I need to just go. And I did that, and by a series of uh, more years of details, I ended up competing for Team USA in the DFAC World Finals that year in Miami. Wow. Uh, because they were filling out the team, and they invited me to do the 50-plus master's class. Um, so after that, I was like, if I did this kind of by accident, accidentally on purpose, what could I do if I really tried? And since then, it's been about now I really want to make my mark as a, a master's level bodybuilder. Um, I have a supportive wife. I don't have children. I have a flexible career, you know, professional life, and I can train and do what I want to do. You don't do. have little children. You still have children. No, I don't have children. I have, I, you have adults. I have adults, yes, okay. grown people. Grown people. Who I happen to be a father to but not a parent to. There we go. <laughs> yes, I yeah. love it. Yes. And is this your first first place? It's my first first place ever. Congrats. The best I've I ever mean... done um, to this point was third in my class. So it was a big, and that's the big deal because that qualified me for a pro card. So I'm not ready. Wow. I'm not ready to compete as a pro. But it, I was telling people, I had to pee in a cup for the first time because if you win your class, you got to pee in a cup. You got to pass your urinalysis. Oh, you gotta because pass it's a, natural. Yup, it's natural. So you got to make sure not you even pass you have a polygraph to even enter. So you, you a go down. polygraph. Yup, and if you fail the polygraph, even if you paid to do what you did, they won't let you on the stage. And if and then, but if you win your class, then you'd immediately after you leave the stage, you got to go right to the bathroom because people are doping. Well, the whole point of natural bodybuilding is we want a level playing field. We don't want people on there who, who so you, so most federations you got to be at least seven years. Um, you know, free from any not, for any type of enhance, enhancement, yeah. and and you, you got to pass a polygraph to just get on the stage, and then after that, if you win your class, you immediately got to go pee in a cup. Now, what's your diet like? I I mean, my diet. This is the good thing about being a bodybuilder for me because I eat clean anyway, so I don't eat processed foods. None, uh, not a package of potato chips, not a none, popcorn, none, 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 nothing. No, none of that. I eat, I eat, uh, but I, I will eat, like I said, I eat a little chocolate every day. I love chocolate. The things you love, you should have every day. You just only have a little bit of it. Um, I eat lots of vegetables, lots of lean meat, mostly fish and chicken. I'll do some red meat, but only occasionally. Um, lots of um, brown rice, sweet potatoes, potatoes. Are you doing dairy? Very little dairy. I, I'm not purposely avoiding it, but the way my diet is laid out, I don't really do much dairy. Okay. Um, um, yeah, and it's basically that, and to season it the right. I don't do, use too much salt. I don't add salt and sugar. Um, so your blood pressure is good. Your your diabetes. Blood pressure is good. I mean, that was again the whole the, my whole motivation 
is really to maintain optimum health for as long as I can. Like high blood pressure runs in my family. So I have a predisposition for it that so far I've never had to take any prescription nope. medicine. And you're going to be 60 in March. And I'm going to be 60 in March. A um, black man not taking any blood pressure nothing, medicine. Nothing, 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 nothing. You uh, are a unicorn, and I remember sir. remember I survived. I, I think I was talked about this the last time I was on the show. In 2009, I lived for a year with a prostate cancer diagnosis. Never got sick because they caught it so before I was even symptomatic. So, um, so wow. sometimes it never ha- feels like it never happened because right. I, I don't have any... I didn't have any complications after the fact. Didn't have your prostate removed. Didn't, didn't ha- have to go. No, I did have my prostate. Oh, you removed, did have to have it. But removed. It, they caught it so early, and the technique, um, the the guy that did my surgery, played himself on law and order and criminal intent. That's how bad he is, Doctor David Samadi, and and uh, so it, it's almost like it never happened because I was asymptomatic when they found it, and my surgery was totally successful, and it's almost like it never happened. No side effects. No okay. side effects. You know, but if they don't catch it early and you're not healthy. It creates more complications yes, when they have to do it. because with. it's compounding your fracture. Absolutely. Alfred Edmund, Jr. I'm also um, announcing today I'm doing a, a wellness retreat. I was telling him about this during the break. He may be joining us. We need us. more of those, by the way. 